welcome you all to principles of organic synthesis presently we study the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction so far in this topic we had one lecture where we studied the principles of nucleophilic aromatic substitution where we have seen two types of reactions first one was addition followed by elimination reaction next one we have seen the elimination followed by addition reaction if you remember in the case of addition elimination reaction the substrate should have a electron withdrawing group if you have a good leaving group at the ortho or para position with respect to the strong electron withdrawing group in that case the nucleophile can undergo if so substitution reaction via addition followed by elimination in the latter case we have seen the involvement of benzene intermediate if the aromatic system has halogen which is not activated those substrates can be reacted with a strong base like sodamide you can deprotonate the proton next to the carbon which contains the halogen atom so in this way you will be able to form a benzene once you form the benzene intermediate which can readily undergo addition reaction to give you anion which can be protonated from the proton source that is present in the reaction medium so in this lecture we will study two more reactions which are not very common uh, first reaction involves the reaction of diastonium salt which we will study in detail later however just we will try to see some examples if you have the particular diastonium salt which when you heat or apply light it can lose nitrogen molecule and you will be able to get a carbocation which can be reacted with the fluoride ion so you can get the fluorobenzene as the product then we will see some examples of halobenzenes if we have the halobenzenes if we have the aromatic system uh, that contains halogen atom you can try to do substitution reaction via radical anion intermediate and when you react the aryl halo substrate by it can convert into radical anion which can lose uh, the corresponding halide ion once if you lose that one you will be able to have a radical intermediate that radical intermediate can react with the nucleophile and you can uh, again transfer the electron in this way the reaction can be carried out we will see two types of reactions then we will see the ulman coupling which is uh, also a very important transformation uh, in organic synthesis if you have the aryl halide you can try to react with nucleophile via coupling reaction then we will see the recent development in the aromatic system where you can try to introduce nucleophile via ch functionalization at the end we will the, see the stevens castro coupling reaction here the reaction of uh, diastonium salt is shown and if, for example if you have that diastonium salt and when you apply energy it can lose nitrogen molecule once you form the carbocation this carbocation can react with the nucleophile in this way you can try to introduce nucleophile and the mechanism of rates in the reaction of diastonium salts with the nucleophile and the driving force you can see here resides in the strength of the bonding in the nitrogen molecule so once if you apply the energy light or heat energy it can lose nitrogen molecule you will be able to generate a carbocation which can undergo reaction with the nucleophile for example now let us take this aniline you can convert into diastonium salt when you react with hno2 and tetrafluoroborate and you can make this salt once you form this salt when you provide energy when you heat this salt it can lose nitrogen molecule and bf3 
in this way you will be able to form the fluorobenzene as a product. The reaction pathway is shown here as you can see here when you heat this salt it can lose a nitrogen molecule and you will have this salt once again this can transfer fluoride ion so it can undergo reaction you will, in this way you will lose BF3. Here an example shown for this transformation when you react this uh, aniline derivative and with the sodium nitride when you react with tetrafluoroborate and you will be able to introduce uh, fluorine in the place of NH2. First it forms the disodium salt. When you heat under these reaction conditions it can lose nitrogen molecule you will have this kind of intermediate it can transfer the fluoride ion you can get this fluorobenzene as a product. Here another example shown in this case you can see here a uh, 2 amino biridine derivative which when you react with the sodium nitride and this reagent in the similar way you will be able to introduce a fluorine atom in place of NH2 and first as we have seen you form the disodium salt then it can be converted into the corresponding fluoro derivative and here also you can see here when you react with the uh, sodium nitride tetrafluoroborate you can see here it can also undergo reaction as just we have seen and you can do the fluorination. So, if you have the aniline substrates or aromatic amines you can make uh, disodium salt with the HNO2 in the presence of uh, tetrafluoroborate you can make the corresponding salt. Once you have the salt which when you heat and you can get the corresponding fluoro derivative. The next reaction is the involvement of radical anion. You can see here and this reaction can be facilitated by solvated electrons. You can also carry out the reaction in the presence of light. You can also perform this reaction electrochemically as well as by heating. The general mechanism of this transformation shown here as you can see when you have the halo benzene. Uh, aryl halides and when you uh, provide the electron and then you can form the radical ion. Once you form the radical ion which can lose uh, the halide ion you will be able to have the aryl radical intermediate. Once if you have the aryl radical it can react with the nucleophile you can end up with the radical ion which can transfer electron to the aryl halide. So, you can get this uh, substituted compound where you generate again radical ion which can further react with the nucleophile the reaction goes on. First one is initiation if you have the electron source you can generate the radical ion. This uh, propagation step as soon as you have the nucleophile it can uh, undergo reaction you will be able to generate the radical ion. This once you have this one this can now lose a electron it can provide the electron to the aryl halide in this way you will get the uh, neutral molecule and you have the radical ion which can now again react with the nucleophile the reaction goes until you have the nucleophile in the reaction medium. So, some of the examples are shown by this uh, synthetic route and here uh, the reaction of bromobenzene with this enolate uh, shown the presence of light uh, in the presence of ammonia and light. Um, so, you can the enolate can readily undergo reaction as just we have seen and you can form the radical ion once you form this one this can now undergo uh, reaction as just we have seen and it will be converted into uh, Pr minus and you will be able to have uh, this alkyl benzene what you do here you form a carbon carbon bond formation you will be able to generate uh, this one it involves a radical. Similarly, the another example here and this also similar way if you have the bromobenzene this enolate can undergo reaction here and you will be able to uh, do alkylation mostly the enolates have been utilized for the carbon carbon bond formation under these reaction conditions and uh, here you have the uh, trialkyl bromobenzene derivative which when you react with this enolate in the presence of light and again it can undergo reaction as we have seen and you will be able to get this alkyl benzene derivative. Here another example is shown in this case and uh, 2 chloropyridine uh, the reaction of 2 chloropyridine with this uh, enolate is shown which can be generated from the astone and uh, this when you treat this enolate with the 2 chlorobidin the presence of light it can undergo substitution reaction in the place of uh, Cl2 through radical ion intermediate and you will be able to do alkylation 
And similarly here, the reaction of uh, four iodo anisole is shown with uh, this uh, phosphorus compound in the presence of light. Again, this one, this can occur. You make a CP bond. And in this case, uh, the reaction of iodo benzene with this lactone. Uh, this reaction has been carried out again the presence of light and uh, strong base. And this base, uh, as we have seen, you can form the radical ion. Once you form this one by electron transfer process, you have the base, it can deprotonate and it can add, then you will be able to make a carbon carbon bond in this position. As you can see here, when you base make it and then it can undergo addition reaction, you will be able to introduce arylation at this uh, position. The another example here again uh, the, the reaction has been shown the presence of tertiary butoxide, uh, ammonia and light. Here also what may happen as we have seen you can form the radical ion. Once you form this one, now this can now react you have the base, the base can deprotonate this proton then you will be able to form this one. It go here, comes here then it can react here then you will be able to make the carbon carbon bond. You can make this. Uh, polycyclic system. So, if you compare the two reactions that we have discussed so far, the first one involves a diastereum salt where you can make fluorobenzene. If you have the aniline amine derivative, you can convert into corresponding diastereum salt uh, with the tetrafluoroborate. Once if you form this one when you heat or uh, irradiate the presence of light, you can uh, convert into fluorobenzene. And in the second case we have seen, if you have the halo substrate, aryl halides, you can transform into radical ion, which can readily undergo reaction with the nucleophile, particularly uh, enolates. So far, whatever we have seen, most of the reactions are involved enolates as a nucleophile, and you can make a carbon-carbon uh, bond formation. In this way, you will be able to construct, for example, polycyclic compound. So far, whatever the example we have seen, all reactions have been carried out using uh, light. This reaction have been performed photochemically under uh, moderate reaction conditions. Now, let us focus on the uh, related reactions. Next one is Ullmann reaction. The reaction is shown here. If you have the aryl halide and uh, you can try to couple, you can get the biaryl system in the presence of copper and base. Uh, if you see the uh, original Ullmann reaction, which, which was discovered around 1900. Uh, this reaction has been carried out using stoichiometric amount of copper in the base under uh, uh, vigorous reaction conditions. The reaction is usually carried out above 150 degrees Celsius and then you can get the biaryl system. Now, this reaction the mechanism of this transformation shown here. First what happens the copper undergoes oxidative addition you can get this uh, compound once if you have this one. So, another copper can react, it can reduce the copper 2 to copper 1 by single electron transfer. At the same time now the copper 0 will be oxidized to copper 1. So, what basically it is converted into copper iodide. It can give one electron, reduce this copper 2 to copper 1 and this will be oxidized to copper 1 iodide. So, it will be oxidized same time therefore, you will get this as a product. This takes place via single electron transfer process. Once you form this one, now this can react with another molecule of iodobenzene as you can see here again oxidative addition and this is uh, 1. So, oxidative addition it will be converted into copper 3. Once you form this one, this can give the product by reductive elimination and you will be able to get copper iodide. Yes. If you see the, the Ullmann reaction, the beginning it was carried out using stoichiometric amount of copper. Later, uh, it has been converted into catalyst system. If you uh, carry out the reaction using ligands, this uh, catalytic activity of the copper can be uh, tuned. So, now so the last 10 to 15 years, several uh, methods have been developed for the Ullmann coupling reaction using ligands. The reaction can be carried out now at moderate temperature below 100 degree Celsius in, the, uh, in uh, at milder reaction conditions using catalytic amount of copper salts. Here an example shown in this case the intramolecular coupling between this uh, two aryl iodide uh, carbon. This carbon between this and this has been shown. This can be carried out 
In this way, you will be able to generate this dihydropranadrin derivative. You can see here, first what will happen as just we have seen when you react with the copper and you can make oxidative addition, then it can react with another copper. For example, uh, this carbon iodine bond undergoes reaction with the copper, first oxidative addition you will get this. When you react with another copper and it will be converted into copper iodide and this will be converted into copper 1 So, this one this now intramolecularly undergo reaction with this carbon iodine bond via oxidative addition reaction you will be able to You will have this intermediate copper 3, which can give the product by reduct elimination. You can get this compound, you will be able to generate uh, copper iodide. So, now the next example involves reaction of uh, 2 bromopyridine using copper triflate. Uh, this reaction you can see here has been shown at room temperature. If you look at uh, the uh, Ullmann react radiation Ullmann coupling reaction which has been carried out above 150 degree Celsius using copper and you can see here that now uh, the, you can try to react carry out the reaction at moderate temperature using um, different copper sources and usually copper complexes when you have the ligand system. So, this catalytic activity of the copper has been shown uh, significantly improved and so that you can use uh, as catalyst this can be carried out at moderate temperature. So far we have seen the C C pond formation here shown the reaction of aniline with this uh, 2 bromobenzoic acid and this can be now coupled as you can make the C n pond amination using copper salt in the presence of base potassium carbonate. Uh, this is known as uh, Jordan's Ullman synthesis. This also now you can carry out amination and you can also make ether. For example, the next one shown here, if you have the phenol, you can try to couple with this para tetrabutyl iodobenzene using copper and iodide in the presence of cesium carbonate and microwave conditions, you will be able to form this uh, diphenyl ether. What you do here, you make a bond between this oxygen and uh, this bond where you have the iodine. So, this carbon where you have the iodine. So, you can make this uh, bond between this uh, oxygen and the carbon. So, you can try to couple here phenol with uh, this iodo benzene derivative uh, using uh, cesium carbonate using copper iodide in the presence of cesium carbonate to give this uh, diarrheal ether. The next example involves the coupling of uh, this amide NH with this uh, bromobenzene you can in this way you will be able to make this uh, amide derivative which when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to get so NRIL amine derivative. And the next example involves here uh, the coupling of uh, this iodobenzene derivatives with the methoxy group is shown here. Uh, in the presence of copper 1 chloride, you can try to couple this uh, methoxy group. In this way, you will be able to make alkyl aryl ether. Here, see NRL aniline derivatives shown. You can what you do, you make a CN bond between this amide nitrogen and uh, bromobenzene. And here, this Aryl iodide has been uh, reacted with uh, the sodium methoxide. In this way, you will be able to make this alkyl ether derivative. The reaction of amide known as Goldberg reaction. The mechanism of this reaction uh, can be understood. So, if you have in this case, you have the copper 1 iodide. Let me write like this. 
the copper on iodide first undergoes reaction with this since you carry out the reaction in the prism base the phenol can react with the base you make the phenoxide at the same time you have the copper on iodide you write here and what you do here you generate so you'll be able to have now so let me let us try to draw the mechanism for this reaction so that you can try to draw similar way for the other substrates first we form this this is again copper one once we form this one which can now undergo reaction with your aryl iodide by oxidative addition let me write air iodide so this is oxidative addition so you'll be able to now once we have this one this can give the product by reduct elimination this is copper 3 this can give the product by so in the so in this way you will be able to complete the catalyst cycle first what happens here whether amine or phenol whether amide which undergoes reaction with the base you can make the uh, uh, anion which can act as a nucleophile which can undergo reaction with the copper one halide or copper one species you will be able to form this compound once you form this one which can now undergo oxidative addition with aryl halide you will be able to have this uh, copper 3 intermediate once we have this one this can give the product by reduct elimination where you can try to generate the copper one species to complete the catalyst cycle so far we have seen some examples for ulman coupling reaction this has been well explored in particular last uh, 20 years considerable progress has been made now several methods have been developed you can try to uh, couple variety of uh, phenols and amines amides and aryl substrates aryl halides uh, to give the a couple product in this way you'll be able to make biaryl system as well as ethers substituted amines uh, in uh, at moderate temperature using catalytic amount of copper to complexes as the catalyst now let us look at the recent development uh, the reaction of aromatic system with uh, amines and if you look at here you have the benzoic acid in its ortho position you can see the pyrrole this is a uh, is important precursor that we use for uh, construction of variety of heterosalic compound so this if you have benzoic acid so we can try to if you make directly to introduce you have the ch bond if you replace with uh, if you couple this pyrrole with this uh, ch bond via dehydrogenated coupling it will be very useful so the reaction condition shown here this can be carried out if you have the benzoic acid what you can do you can make uh, try to react with the 8mno quinoline you will be able to make this amide derivative once you form this one so now you can try to react with uh, azole are pyrrole and uh, analogs and the presence of copper to acetate and cesium carbonate this acts as a, a base under these conditions when you carry out the reaction using this uh, uh, reagent shown a, a 1.5 equal under copper to acetate and 2 equal under cesium carbonate you can try to introduce azole via ch functionalization and here shown not only uh, pyrrole you can also introduce indole and carbazole 
and uh, this pyrosol they work very well and you can have variety of other substituent like uh, for example, you can have here Cl chloro iodo substituent methoxy methyl nitro group the reaction works efficiently. If you look at here the reaction always takes place the ortho CH bond which is less reactive comparing to this carbon halogen bond. However, here this the activation of the CH bond takes place then uh, this uh, azole coupling occurs and this is a some of the example. Now, let me show you the reaction pathway how it takes place after the reaction what you can do you can also do base hydrolysis and you will be able to get uh, the 2 prol benzoic acid just we have seen we use precursor to make variety of hydrocyclic compound. So, what basically so far whatever you have seen the reaction the case of aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction and always you should have a activated uh, aromatic system. For example, if the beginning we have seen if you have a strong electron with the drawing group and if we are leaving group the reaction can take place uh, where at the carbon of wherever you have the leaving group at para or ortho position with respect to the electron with the drawing group and uh, the reaction takes place additional elimination we have seen the last class then we have seen some of the reaction through benzene mechanism. Today's class we have seen if you have aniline derivative that you can convert into diazonium salt and uh, if you make diazonium salt of tetrafluoroborate then you can try to convert into the corresponding fluoro derivatives. Then we have seen uh, the reaction that involves a radical ion intermediate. If you have the halo substrate, you can convert into alkyl benzene via what you do here, you form a radical ion uh, by several approaches. We have seen uh, the use of uh, light. Once you form the radical ion, which can readily react with the nucleophile. Then we have seen the Ullmann coupling reactions. If you see all these substrates, they have the they are functionalized aromatic system. Here functionalization you do here CH bond this is a quite efficient route because auto economical you can have broad substrate scope. So, if you for example, if you have the benzoic acid you can make uh, the this auxiliary you can try to react with the 8 amino quinoline you make the amide you can use the amide to chelate with your metal salt then activate the CH bond in this way you will be able to introduce the uh, azole moiety the reaction pathway shown here since you have to carry out the reaction at the base, you can deprotonate. So, when you have this uh, pyrrole, when you react with the copper to acetate, one molecule of acetic acid goes out, and then you will be able to have this copper to intermediate. Once if you have this one, now again you have the base, it can deprotonate, and another molecule of acetic acid can come out, and you will be able to have the acetic acid in the present base will be converted into cesium acetate you have the copper to intermediate. Once if you have this one, this can be oxidized to copper 3 using copper 2 acetate which will be converted into copper 1 acetate through uh, electron transfer. Now, you will have this copper 3 intermediate. Once if you have this one, now it can activate the CH bond intramolecularly and you will be able to have this copper 3 intermediate once form this one. This can give the product by reductive elimination. In this way, you can make a carbon nitrogen bond at the ortho position with respect to the amide substituent at the ortho CH bond can be activated. You can make a CN bond. So, now let us look at one more example. Just we have seen if you have the acid for example, benzoic acid I can convert into amide. So, you can react with lose. Uh, so, you can uh, try to uh, make amide So, we have seen so you have this one you can make the amide you can activate this CH bond you can introduce the azole group and here if you have aniline you can also try to do similar way. For example, take the synophthalamine once if you have this one similar way you can try to react with the uh, 
this carboxylic acid you can make So this once you form this one now this can make chelation with your uh, metal activate this CH bond in this way you can try to also introduce the um, acyl group you can make the C n bond formation for example here the reaction of indole is shown you can activate the CH bond you can introduce indole group this is also very uh, uh, useful reaction as you can see here variety of uh, indole derivatives can be coupled and uh, so you can make a carbon hydrogen bond. The reaction pathway of uh, this transformation shown here as just we have seen uh, in the present base and copper to a state and uh, this one. So, you will be able to form uh, this intermediate. Once you form this one, so you can lose one molecule of uh, uh, cesium state and then you can form this intermediate. Once you form this one, now, this can further react with the indole. So, the base you can have this intermediate, this is copper 2. Once you form this one, this can, as just we have seen, it can be oxidized to copper 3 and where it is in copper 2 state, which will be reduced to copper 1. So, this can give the product by reductive elimination. Once if you have this one and this in the pressure base and what you can activate the CH bond, uh, the comma CH bond, then you will be able to have this uh, copper 3 intermediate. Once if you have this one, this can be uh, converted into the product by reductive elimination, where you will generate the copper 1 species. And since you have the acetic acid and uh, oxidizing agent, it will be further oxidized to uh, copper 2 acetate to complete the catalyst cycle. Just we have seen two examples, and where you can also introduce azoles, you can make a C n bond formation, you can convert C H bond into C n bond formation via C H functionalization. Uh, by what you do here, you have a directing chelating group in your substrate, so that which can chelate with your metal catalyst, activate the C H bond through cyclometallation, you form a carbon metal bond. Once you make the carbon metal bond, then you can try to introduce the uh, functional group, in this case azole and you can make a carbon hydrogen bond. So, in this way you will be able to make variety of functionalized aromatic systems. Now, let us look at one more example in this uh, topic and you can see here and just we have seen the activation of this comma C H bond through using copper to acetate and then you can try to couple with azole. We have seen some examples for the reaction with the indole. So, here uh, the reaction with the boronic acid is shown using copper to acetate and here you can make this ether. This also very important compound, you can convert the C H bond into RL ether. And this also you can see it is uh, this uh, unit is present in several uh, medicinal important compound and this also very uh, important transformation. The mechanism of this transformation shown here and if you uh, see the paper you can find this reaction also quite general variety of uh, substrate can be reacted with the boronic acid to make the corresponding ethers. As just we have seen the presence of base and copper to acetate can react with your substrate you will be able to form this copper to intermediate. Once you form this one this can be oxidized to copper 3 by copper to acetate which will be converted into copper 1 when you have the copper 3 now it can activate this CH bond. You can see here you have the copper 3 intermediate. Now, the boronic acid can as shown here can react with the base and water you will be able to form this intermediate. This will be converted in the, the presence of water into phenol. The reaction medium wants to form this one. Now, since you have the base you can make the phenoxide which can now the phenol can react with this one and you will be able to form this uh, intermediate this also copper 3. Once you form this one, 
this can give the product by reductive elimination you make a bond between this carbon and this oxygen and you will be able to make the ether derivative. So, this reaction is usually carried out in the presence of using phenol and here the boronic acid has been used. The boronic acid is converted into phenol in the reaction medium. Uh, once you form this phenol in the reaction medium, it can readily react with this intermediate and you can form this copper 3 complex. Once you form this one, this can give the product by reductive elimination. So far, we have seen uh, some examples how you can try to introduce nucleophile in the aromatic system. We have seen the C two examples for C n pond formation and one example for C o pond formation uh, using transfer metal catalyst in particular copper based system. This reaction has been well explored the last couple of years. Uh, for your understanding, I have shown three examples. Now, you can try to introduce variety of nucleophile the aromatic system via C H functionalization if you have a functional group. If you have the catalyst systems, you can try to activate the C H bond. Uh, you can make the carbon metal bond, then you can try to introduce the nucleophile. The next one is Stevens hastro coupling reaction. This reaction we have seen earlier and uh, let me uh, show once again uh, briefly and if you have the aryl halide for example, here iodobenzene, this can be readily reacted with the terminal alkyne in the presence of copper one halide, if you have this terminal alkyne the present base the mechanism shown here. If you have the copper one halide and if you have the terminal alkyne you can try to in the present base you can make this copper one alkyne species. Once you form this one, this species can now react with the aryl iodide in this case here aryl iodide by oxidative addition you will form this copper 3 intermediate and this copper 3 species can give the product coupled product by a reductive elimination you generate the copper 1 species. What you do here you make a carbon carbon bond between this carbon of uh, the iodobenzene with this uh, carbon of this terminal alkyne you can make a carbon carbon bond. In this way you can try to make aryl alkyne derivatives. So, in this way you can make variety of alkanyl derivatives which also widely used in organic synthesis for the functional transformations. Uh, here some examples are shown for this uh, Stevens castro coupling reaction. The first reaction you can see here the reaction of this alkyne the presence of base as just we have seen you can make the corresponding copper alkynyl derivative once you form this one as just we have seen. Now, this can undergo oxidative addition here and then you will be able to have So, this can be converted into by reductive elimination. Once you form this one, this can also cyclize since you have the copper uh, system, it can undergo intramolecular cyclization. So, in this way you will be able to form this uh, lactone. So, when you have this 2 iodo benzoic acid and this copper alkyl derivative, once if you have this 2 you, when you heat in DM of uh, when you reflux a DM of solvent for uh, longer time, it can undergo CC coupling followed by intramolecular cyclization to give the lactone. And in this reaction as just we have seen and you have the base copper on iodide triphenyl phosphine once this under these conditions as just we have seen you can make the corresponding copper alkyl intermediate once you have this one which can undergo oxidative addition with this vinyl iodide derivative. Once you form this copper 3 intermediate, which can give the product by reductive elimination, in this way you will be able to form this macrocyclic lactone as the product. So, Stephen Castro coupling uh, finds broad utility in synthetic chemistry, and if you have the uh, terminal alkyne, you can make react with the copper 1 halide, you can make the copper alkyne derivative. Once you have this one, this can be readily coupled with aryl halides 
or vinyl halides first one involves the coupling of iodobenzene derivative next one involves the coupling of uh, vinyl iodide you can make cc pond formation in this way you will be able to make uh, macrocyclic systems in summary so in this class we have seen five types of reactions first one we have seen the reactions of uh, disodium salt if you have the aniline derivatives which can be readily reacted with tetrafluoroborate and sodium nucleophilic substitution reaction if you look at there if you have the electron source it can be converted into radical ion once if you have the radical ion which can be readily reacted with the nucleophile and this uh, this uh, radical reaction and uh, until you have the nucleophile the reaction can be facilitated this reaction is has been widely used to make a carbon carbon bond formation particularly if you have the enolate it can be readily reacted with aryl halide to make uh, the corresponding alkyl derivatives then we have seen the ulman coupling if you have the aryl halide you can try to couple them by a cc coupling using stoichiometric ground copper under heating conditions uh, this reaction has been also now improved you can also carry out the reaction using catalytic amount of copper one sources using uh, ligands we have seen some examples also for the uh, co coupling and cn coupling if not only you can couple the uh, two aryl iodides to give the biaryl systems if you have aryl halides you can also try to react with the phenols and anilines and amides you can make co and cn bonds we also have seen the mechanism first what happens this uh, Uh, the phenol or aniline or amide undergoes reaction uh, with the base you generate the corresponding anion which can undergo reaction with the copper one iodide by a substitution reaction you can get the copper one intermediate this copper one intermediate undergoes oxidative addition with the aryl halide you will generate the copper three intermediate which can give the product by reductive elimination in this way you will be able to form diaryl ethers aryl amines in good yields so this reaction has been now well explored and you can carry out the reactions at moderate temperature uh, in good yields with broad substrate scope then we have seen the recent developments the ch functionalization for the introduction of uh, azoles in the aromatic system for example uh, if you have the uh, benzoic acid anion derivatives you can try to couple selectively uh, ch bond reduce selectively using the diuretic group you can introduce azoles we have some examples similar way you can also try to react with the phenols other nucleophiles aliphatic amines this reaction also has been well explored and copper palladium based catalytic systems are considerably explored then we have seen the stevens castro coupling reaction this reaction also has been already discussed in another lecture however you can once again we can try to briefly uh, understand this reaction if you have that alkyne which can be readily reacted with the uh, copper one halide in the presence of base you can get the corresponding copper one alkyl derivative once if you have this one this can be readily reacted with aryl halide for example if you have the iodobenzene you can make cc coupling then we have seen two examples uh, depends upon the nature of the substrate uh, you can also try to make uh, macrocyclic systems we have seen uh, one example and you can where you can try to couple a terminal alkyne with a vinyl iodide using uh, this strebens castro coupling via cc pond formation uh, this provides efficient synthetic route to construct this kind of uh, scaffold otherwise it is very difficult to uh, make this molecule with this we conclude this lecture thank you very much